Hello everyone, so today I'm going to give you a first-hand, real-life example of three psychological theories. One, observational learning. Two, classical conditioning. And three, operant conditioning. Uh, to briefly summarize, observational learning is a behavior that you that you absorb or that you receive based on something that you've witnessed, you've experienced, or you've learned. Now with that, there will be usually a model. The model being a parent, a teacher, a friend, a sibling, a dog, and it can be inanimate objects as well, like a test, or a board game, or a video game or an Xbox for instance if since we're going down the uh, video game industry route now back to my example during my psychology class today we had to do a group assignment now in this group assignment we had to be able to demonstrate which examples are operant conditioning and which examples are classical conditioning classical conditioning is a little different than operant conditioning Classical conditioning is not only a response you do naturally, but somewhere along the lines, either something or someone adds adds a similar a similar experience that creates that same effect. So the easiest example would be Pavlov and his dogs. So there was a bell that would be rung, ding ling ling ling. ling. And the dog wouldn't do anything because it didn't mean anything. But if every time Pavlov went ding ling 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 ling, he puts food in the dog's mouth. Now, what does a dog do when it has food in its mouth? It drools. So every time he ding lings his bell, the dog gets food. So after a period of time, just hearing the ding a ling of the bell will make the dog drool even if there's no food because it's become ingrained in their subconscious that ringing bell equals food so I'm going to drool for the food that's going to surely come operant conditioning is more about a voluntary behavior and its consequence so there are multiple examples of a operant behavior, but, or a operant con con conditioning, excuse me, there's four actually, but I'm going to summarize all of them that there are two things. There's the operant and there's the consequence. Your behavior, your specific behavior that you do is the operant. The consequence or what 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 is led after your behavior or what happens after your behavior is the is the consequence it's the effect it's whether it's good or bad it's what's happened because of your behavior so every time when when the, when psychologists try to teach students operant conditioning they use this wheel method so you have your operant conditioning right here and right here you have the consequence. Operate your behavior leads to a consequence. But that consequence is attributed by the operant and the behavior. And vice versa. Hence the full circle, the full wheel. Now, since I kind of debriefed you all on those three topics, I'm going to now get into my example. Excuse me. So, we had a group experiment today uh, to where we had to choose from ex examples that we ourselves come up with classical conditioning, operant conditioning, and uh, observational learning. So, the first one was classical uh, conditioning. I suggested you can have somebody who's frustrated really frustrated about a question on a test your natural reaction would be to raise your hand and get help 
I won't bore you with all the details, but my group generally accepted that, and with a few minor modifications to what the scenario is, it made sense. And the uh, professor even came over and said, yeah, that works for quiet classical conditioning. So that's one point for me. I, again, I already kind of understand most of this stuff because I took psychology back in high school, so I already had a prior knowledge to it. Now for the fun part. So on the last question of our test, we we had to come up with a single problem that that encompasses classical and operant conditioning as well as observational learning. So we had this weird scenario that like if you get bad grades, it would lead to depression. So your natural reaction would be to seek tutoring. But as this continues and you continue to receive bad grades, despite going to the tutoring center, when you see the test, you will get depression. That's what I was trying to tell my group, because we had to come up first with a classical condition, a, uh, a classical condition experiment. That's what we had to do first in the classical experiment. Then we could then proceed to make it operant to put what is the behavior, what is the consequence. How I thought of the behavior is the behavior of getting bad grades, you do crap on a test. Your consequence is going to be depression. Kind of simple. Well, my partner decided that it was quote shit. So he went in and said that no, 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 it would be Bad grades leads to tutoring because tutoring leads to good grades. There's only a problem with that. You're you're using two different consequences and two different operands, or you're you're having two different conse you sorry you're having two different stimuli, resulting in two different outcomes. You know, you know good. So he came up to us and said quite blankly that is wrong. So what does my partner do? He goes ballistic, calls a teacher a racist, bigot, discriminative bastard. That's what he said on the kind of... That's the less profane way he said it, because he said it a lot worse. And I didn't know what to say. I was embarrassed to be in his group, first of all, because I was like, this is my group member, and this is going to affect my grade. And that pissed me off. But what happened next was interesting. As he was berating to the teacher, the, the teacher just looked at him like, what are you doing? He had no anger on his face, no content, no, you know, frustration or just, ah, shut up, you know. He was calm. He was looking for any micro expressions that betrayed my, my uh, colleague. And they did. I saw him even before he even went up to the con to the a teacher to go plead his case. I saw in his in his facial expressions that he was hysterical. That even to him it didn't even make any sense why he was screaming and yelling and getting so pissed off. So, what I wrote down is this is an example of operant conditioning, classical conditioning, and observational learning. I'll kind of go over briefly with those. The classical conditioning is that the that the teacher came over and said that we were missing a part on our experiment because my colleague decided he was going to come up with his own and he wanted to put that on our paper and he did it which since it's a group experiment you know, you kind of have to roll with the punches. You have to accept that people want to take charge. I said, okay, fine. You can put your example. If it's wrong, I'll probably kill you for the bad grade. I'm kidding. I'm not that rude. But I said, fine. No, go ahead. So then when the teacher comes in and looks at our example, what do you think he says? Oh, it's wrong. There's a glaringly big mistake in, in your experiment. My colleague gets pissed off, starts screaming at the instructor. So anytime the instructor comes over, over this, uh, the, seeing this, what now we're going to realize that 
every time the teacher comes and looks at his paper in particular, he's going to have an outburst. He's going to revolt. He's going to just lose it, be volatile, explode on the teacher. Which is fascinating to see. The operant conditioning of this uh, 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 scenario, so it, the the behavior of me of as I was observing this, the behavior of the student being volatile towards the teacher, screaming and and accusing the teacher of being a racist bigot, results in the teacher not caring, cause. He didn't care. His face was like, I really don't give a shit. What you did was wrong. And if you can't figure it out, then you gotta seek help. And you gotta ask your, crap with your classmates. Of course, he didn't ask us anything. He just kept on rolling. The observation of learning is that, well, the model easily would be the, uh, the uh, professor. Over it all, the model would be the professor. Not not the kid that's screaming hell murder. But the professor himself. Anyway, that was a really awesome rant. That was a really awesome experience that I experienced that that I was able to tie them all together and and I was so close to just put it all in our example, but I couldn't because, you know, my group member was still there and I didn't want to, you know, embarrass him or embarrass us as a group. So anyway, that's my rant for today. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you again next time.